Hello, so welcome to my uh, YouTube channel here. I'm gonna start a little build process uh, for my motor. A uh, little background is unfortunately my last race at Eagles Canyon, I blew up my uh, 4A GD motor. And I had that motor for about one and a half years, just driving at the track, and it's been mainly a track motor. It hasn't really seen street miles, and I, and I rebuilt it too with just fresh rings and fresh bearings and everything else was reused. The, the machine shop, you know, just inspected everything, made sure everything was still good. And thankfully they were. We just cleaned it, honed it, and decked the block and resurfaced the head and all that. So, and then resealed everything with OEM gaskets and it worked. And I did the rebuild myself. Um, so I felt like, you know, if the motor was bad from the beginning, it probably would have blown up already, like when I first started the car, or maybe after my first track session. So thankfully it lasted me that long, but I have a feeling my motor blew up because my oil pump probably failed. Uh, looking at the oil log from my aim telemetry, it looked like the pressure suddenly dropped in one corner at a high RPM and that split second is all I took to uh, destroy the motor. So um, what I'm going to do is this is my spare motor. Um, this is the motor that originally came in with my 8.6 when I first bought it. And I did get it running and everything, but at the tune shop, um, it started smoking like a steam locomotive. and. Um, we immediately just stopped it. it was, the car was just idling, so I didn't want to push it or anything. And find out the compression on this motor wasn't that good. So I ended up pulling this motor out and just, you know, leaving it as a spare. And I got another 4AG, which ended up needing to be rebuilt too. So that's the one I, I rebuilt and everything. And um, so then my plan is to pull out my old motor uh, and inspect it and see what went wrong and failed. And then whatever failed in that motor, I want to upgrade in this motor here. So with this part though, I'm just going to document on how to disassemble a 4AG. Uh, basically, you want to remove the timing belt and everything else like the oil pump, the crank, uh, and the pulleys here just so you can get to the, uh, to the head and pull that out. So I'm going to just document that part first. We'll just see uh, how it goes. It's like, almost 10 o'clock p.m. here, um, so I do have work and all that good mess. So, um, you know, whatever I'll, I'll finish, I'll finish, and whatever I don't, I'll just do in part two and whatever parts I gotta do. So, yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, video this whole ordeal and kind of take it to the process uh, for some certain things. So, yeah, first thing I do is just remove the cover, which I kind of did here already. Uh, and then I'm gonna remove this pulley and uh, remove all their stuff here. If I need any help, I'll just look at the 4G manual. Thankfully, I downloaded the PDF before it became unavailable on the internet. So I do have that with me, so just in case I have any issues, I'll uh, do that there. So, but most of this stuff is, I barely say, mostly straightforward. Uh, you don't need special tools for this. So yeah, let's get started. All right, I'm gonna pull this thing up. Alright, so to remove this crank, uh, you can't remove it by socket. You gotta use like an impact. Because if you remove it by socket, you're just gonna be turning the motor. You're not gonna be able to knock this uh, bolt here loose. So I'm just gonna do that. It's hard, so I'm gonna use a hammer to remove this. Just push it out with a block and wood and push it out slowly here. Yep, yep, that's what I have to do. Let's see here. I'm gonna have a little piece of wood here somewhere. There you go.
like halfway out. Probably a special tool like a pulley. Puller would probably help a lot with this, but since I don't have it, I'm using a block of wood and hammer. It seems to be doing the job. Oh, whoops. It's dark. Let me go fix that up there. some of these bolts but this is like a spare motor rebuild so I can easily replace these bolts at the hardware store and stuff so no big deal but I am going to put them together so I don't lose it okay So you can tell, I kind of pull out all the front part here. So next, I have to remove the cam gears in order to get to this part here too next. So you have to remove the valve cover, which is just four bolts on each uh, cover here. There are 10 mil bolt uh, nuts there, you just pull them out. I'm just gonna just make some room on my table here. I'm gonna take advantage of that. Let me get like a little, uh, let's see here. Right here, oh, this is the best one. Who's this guy here? Put this one like right here. This one next to it. Okay, cool. So I think it's a 12 mil for this guy here, so I'm gonna do that here shortly. Let's just pull this out. Here we go. Right here is perfect. That's a 14. So you all can see here too here. Let's just pull this guy out here so you can see. So yeah, you can tell, you know, I remove all the front part here. It wasn't too difficult, but you know, then again, some of the parts were kind of 
loose already because this is my spare again. So to remove this, to get to the back of this, because you're gonna need to remove this to remove the head, uh, you, this is a 14 mil bolt, and this is the one I'm talking about. You have a you need an adjustable wrench here, so you can keep this camshaft still while you loosen it. Um, if you actually try moving this right now with like an impact or um, just even a ratchet, you do risk moving this camshaft and pushing the valves down onto a piston and probably ruining your motor there. So uh, you always wanna do it right. And yeah, so I'm gonna go do that there for y'all here. All right, so, um, you know, when you're disassembling things, you wanna make notice sometimes the orientation here. So let me take a, a little uh, show here. So you can tell here um, that there's like these little notches here. So you can see how the camshaft works here. So you have also the intake side, which is this guy, and the exhaust side, which is over here. And, um, you just wanna make note of these little references here. Uh, but on the manual, it'll show you how to set up timing and everything. Thankfully, this is like at top dead center basically for me when I'm disassembling here. But uh, just FYI, uh, you wanna make note of these little orientation marks and things like that. Uh, but yeah, if you have the manual, it makes it a lot easy. So I'm not too worried about it because I'm gonna set up timing anyways when I put this motor into the, into the uh, H6, so yeah. And the cam gears, they're pretty much the same. So you don't have to worry about like one cam gear being the exhaust and one being intake because they're, they're basically the same um, cam gears. So you can tell with these notches, so yeah. And let me uh, just show you again the um, the way it's uh, oriented, so at least y'all can see that. So this is the intake side, and you can tell like this notch is kind of pointing up. This is the exhaust side where the, the notch is kind of pointing down there. So just always make sure of these references because sometimes you get it wrong and then you're gonna be spending hours wondering why your car can't turn on or things like that. And then this is the head, it's pretty good. Um, I don't think there's any issues with this head, but I'm gonna take it to the machine shop, like I said, just to make sure that uh, it is still usable. But I'm planning to use my big port head. This is a small port head here. I'm planning to use my big port head in, my, in the blown motor, just, you know, but I wanna make sure that also this is good just in case I do have to use this head for the H6. But ideally, I know, I guess from what I read online, the big port head is best for track applications. Um, but honestly though, like with me, um, this, this motor, I don't think, I'm not planning to make a lot of power. I just want something really reliable and just kind of learn from, uh, you know, what happened, uh, at the race, why my motor blew up and all that good mess. But yeah, I'll just continue on. Next is, uh, to remove this little, uh, shield off the motor here. And I think it's a 10, uh, 12 mil, probably or 10. So I think it's a 10. Yep, it's a 10 mil. 
So we'll put this socket right there here. And these bolts are kind of like small bolts too, so you don't want to lose these types of bolts here. So I'm going to put them all together. So at least we don't lose uh, track of these guys here. So I'm going to put these like right here. together here. Okay. All right, so you can see here now, like this whole access, I can get to the block, uh, to the head now, right? because everything's all kind of disconnected on this part here. And then you just want to go on the sides here just to make sure. And this is kind of like my notes when I was building my older motor with the uh, fuel sender and all that good mess. But yeah, um, good stuff. You just want to make sure nothing else is hanging, which there isn't here uh, on here. So like this motor is kind of partially already disassembled. Um, I do have to go to the back here though, so you can see um, right here. Uh, let's just see here. Uh, I do have to kind of disconnect the hoses here. And this is an AE92 small, uh, small part, uh, seven rib uh, motor. And these came with um, oil, oil drain ports. Like you see right here, there's a hole right there. That's an, ex, that's an extra drain port for the motor, for the head to go down here, which is a really nice uh, deal. So I might, um, you know, possibly use this head because this block has this little port. I can always like uh, close this guy off, but it is nice to have an extra drain port for the head. So uh, I might actually use this one instead. Um, it's nice having an extra like drains for the head for the oil to go down back into the block. So yeah, I might actually do that. Shoot, that is actually a nice discovery. But you can tell I do have to disconnect this hose, which I will. And on this side, it's pretty much all uh, emptied out here. So um, nothing is kind of connected here. So I'm going to disconnect this, this part right here. And then I'll show you how to remove these camshafts here. There is kind of a torque sequence. I'm trying to remember. I believe it's from inside to outside type of deal. And you do like crisscross patterns here. Uh, but I'm going to double check that because if you just zap away these bolts, um, you end up risking bending the camshafts because these are underneath, you know, some pressure. So uh, you just want to make sure that, you know, you do that uh, reversal or removing of these camshafts the right way. So I'm going to look up the manual here too also and just to make sure. So I'll put this guy back on here and I'll just remove the deal here. Well, Actually, my wife is calling me right now, so I'll continue this um, later. Uh, I had to go pick her up and all that good stuff. She's actually out like partying, so I'm the DD right now. Um, but anyways, I will continue this. I'll probably be part two of the video. All right, see ya. Bye.